Hello, my name is Faisal Khan. This is a second video in a three series, a uh, three part video that I'm doing on understanding how settlements can be done using a stable coin. What you're seeing on the screen is part two. Uh, part one should be shown over here in a second or two. You can go and check that out. Part three I will be releasing in a few days from now. And what this is showing you is a, a zoomed out ecosystem. And obviously we will go through each part of what it looks like when a money services business on each end of the border is involved in the transportation of crypto. The assumption here being that the crypto is either accepted on one or both sides of the border with the MSP. And this is a business to business transaction. So let's get started. Uh, what we have over here is a business A, and business A has a crypto wallet. That crypto wallet obviously needs to be funded, and the, the typical way it can be funded is either through pay-in or deposit or transfer. Someone transfers money into it. They can also go to an exchange. They can, uh, you know, exchange for products and services. They can also go to a crypto exchange, and they could also mint or mine coins and then exchange them for the stable coin. The... Business has its regular uh, channels, so you can you know use ACH or EFT, peer-to-peer -peer payments app, you know like Venmo, or Zelle, or something like that. You can have a you know banking services like check or cash, or even retail networks where you could load money. You could have cash management services, you know, uh, from where uh, cash is loaded and then you know it is sent to the banks, uh, to the business's bank account, and you can also get money from the banking and the payment network. So these are the various ways money can come in and out of this business. And what we're trying, and obviously everything is moving from left to right. So there's a debit and there's a credit, debit and a credit, debit and a credit. And we'll come, we'll talk about that. So let's say business A wants to make a payment of $25,000 to business X using stable coins. So chances are they'll get some money in and from that money they would buy some crypto. And once the crypto has been bought, they now have it in the wallet. And during this transfer, I will show you what we can do or what we cannot do or what the areas of concern is. So one of the first things that's gonna be here is we have a money services business and I'll discuss in detail what it entails. But the money services business has money channels from which they can move money in and out. They can use ACH, EFT. They may have a peer-to-peer -peer payment app. They may have a banking services check, cash, retail, cash management, banking. Pretty much the same thing you see over here. And one of the things is when they are taking in onboarding a customer. So, you know, obviously they are sending $25,000 a stable coin when they're onboarding a customer. This is extremely important. This is the identification of the customer. And this is looking through the blockchain if the customer is bringing in crypto. This part is specifically known as the KYB and the KYC part of the business. And this is known as the, you know, the blockchain analytics. And we will just discuss that in a moment. And, uh, so when you have money coming in, this MSP needs to know who you are, why you are, what are you doing? What's the nature of your business? Why the payment is being made? Where did these funds come from, etc.? And that's all part of the KYB process. So let's look at the money services business itself. So money services business has, you know, a transaction monitoring and management system. I did a video earlier on, and you should be able to see it here on the top right of your screen, where I talked about, you know, the different um, areas that an MSP have. And if you want to understand those, you can, you know, click on that and you can have a look at it. But basically what we are seeing here is, you know, a transaction monitoring and management system. Then the, um, obviously, since it's an MSP, the deal in fiat, they have an FX component. They even have an exchange component to exchange it. They have on-ramp and off-ramp from crypto. Um, they have, they're connected to the banking and payment rails. They're connected to APIs. And part of that process, they have, you know, CIP, which is the customer identification program. And they have the KYC and the KYB, the know your customer and the know your business program. And there's crypto analytics. So when money comes in, all these things or all these items or processes or divisions, whatever you can call them, nomenclature notwithstanding, 
are coming into play. One of the things that they're looking at is this part. In the blockchain, uh, they are looking for things like these. And I will do a separate video on this thing altogether. So they're looking at real-time forensics. They're looking at the crypto analytics. They're looking at sanction screening. Uh, they're looking at OFAC checks. They're looking at PEP, RCA. PEP is politically exposed person. They're looking at you know relative or close associate. They're looking at the travel rule. They're looking at the risk matrix, bad actors, custom rules, etc. All this on the blockchain. So they would know where this wallet is, who, who has this wallet, who has done business with this wallet, what are those wallets? Are those bad actor wallets, etc.? All that stuff. So they can go quite a few ways back just to have a very good understanding of this thing. So like I said, the first part is identification and KYC and KYB here when they take in the money, anything done on the blockchain of choice. So, you know, obviously this, this transaction is being done on some blockchain. So the MSP is already connected to that blockchain and against they are able to, and again they're able to do some real-time forensics on it. Um, so when you have the money over here and, you know, like I said, the MSP can offer on rails and off ramp to from the crypto to the fiat and fiat to the crypto world. Then again, before they send information out to their partners. And so this could be a payment rail. This could be a bank. This could be a swift network. This could be a bank transfer. This could be a liquidity provider. This could be a card. Uh, service scheme, this could be an FX provider, this could be a specialized local payment provider, or this could be a, some sort of an exchange they're doing with someone else. So there's so many ways you can exchange money. And again, you know, these entities may also require some KYB and KYC information and some forensic or travel rule information to be parsed because they're saying, hey, listen, you're taking crypto uh, information here. We want to make sure that the origination of the wallet and all the associated information as required by the travel rule is passed to us and then it is passed to the other entity so this is the receiving entity this is the payout entity it has everything that you have over here except in reverse or you know same thing payment monitoring transaction monitoring they have all the banking payment rail apis they will do their own crypto and analytics as well because they will not trust uh, everything that is being passed on to them albeit that is part of the process but they will say hey you know what you've given me the information I am still going to run it through my system. They may also do require KYC and KYB information on their customers. Also, they could require KYC and KYB information from the customer that was sending the money. They too will have some analytics connected to the blockchain of choice and so forth. And then, you know, again, the money goes out, it goes to the business B and business B gets deposits the money in its own crypto wallet. And obviously, once it has it in its own crypto wallet, if it decides to change it for fiat, then the way that is done is it can go to some crypto exchange and exchange it for fiat and so forth. And then they can take the money out through the various uh, payment methods or, you know, channels that they have, which we discussed earlier on ACH, EFT, peer-to-peer -peer banking services like check, cash, retail network, cash management services of banking payment networks themselves. Um, as well, same thing, uh, pay in and pay out deposit. These are the services that business B that received the money can also use it. You know, they can use it for pay in and pay out deposit. They can exchange it for products and services. They can go to a crypto exchange. They can give it to someone else. And as always, the transaction that is being conducted here is on the blockchain, which was same shown over here. So this is what an ecosystem representation. This is, the, if you will, the master blueprint of any MSB on the payers, on the pay inside and the pay outside that would be doing a crypto transaction. The only exception to this rule, and this is where um, the third version of this would come in, is where one of the services is not aligned to or not allowed to receive crypto and you want to use crypto or if you have another intermediary in between how would that use it or if you have banks in certain countries that are not allowed to use crypto but you're using stable coins how would that work how would the equivalent balances be shown and how would this work so for example countries like india bangladesh pakistan nepal uh, Sri Lanka, Nigeria, Tanzania, all these places do not allow crypto to come in from a remittance transactions. How would that work? Or even for a B2B transaction. So how would that work? 
And that is the part three, but this blueprint can be applied to anyone. So if you're building a product or a service based on MS, you know, on using an MSP service, using crypto stable coins or a combination thereof, uh, using fiat, and you want to transfer money, this is the uh, blueprint that you would sort of start masking with and start working with and say, okay, do I have this channel? Do I have these channels? What what channels do I have over here? What sort of solution provider do I have over here? This real-time forensics that I've shown over here, these are super, super important. They are so important in this entire ecosystem that without this, I don't think so this uh, blueprint could actually work. And I, like I said, I'll do a completely separate video on this thing, uh, letting you know what I, what I think about it and how one should go about it. But this is the blueprint. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to ask in the comment section below. Till next time, this is Faisal Khan signing out.